Hey, so uh, the last episode of X Men '97 just came out, and uh, I watched it. I watched it earlier today, and uh, I I liked it. I liked. I thought the episode was really good. This is just gonna be a video of me talking about X Men, the the '97 show. I watched the original one. I watched the the I watched the entirety of the five seasons of the original show uh, before I watched X Men '97, and I'm glad I waited for all the X Men '97 episodes to come out because I prefer it. It was a better. I think it was a better experience, in my opinion, to watch some to watch them back to back instead of waiting each week for them. But I'm mainly going to talk about episode 10 and where I think the show might go on from here. Um, but I'll, I'll briefly go over the episodes of the show before I talk about the finale. The, the first episode, to me, my X-Men, was really... Was a... Was, um... I think it was a good introduction, like a reintroduction to the team. As someone who had recently just finished the original series and then immediately started watching the next series, I thought it was alright as a as a continuation. But I'm sure if you had seen the original series when you were a kid in the 90s and you watched the first episode now, I'm sure it would hit a lot harder, and I'm sure it would be way more enjoyable. I'm I'm not saying. I still enjoyed it, but I'm saying I feel like it would hit a lot harder if you were a kid that grew up in the 90s. And the Cyclops is cool, the fight scenes were cool, this whole show, the animation is beautiful. The Mutant Liberation Begins Episode 2 was, I think, really good too. I liked... I liked Magneto having a trial in the UN and then... And then, um... Like us actually seeing Genosa. Well, that might be episode three. But episode three was um introduced Madeline Pryor and the, the Goblin Queen, which out of nowhere, Jean Grey is suddenly a clone. And the real the real Jean Grey has been under Sinister's supervision, and the Jean Grey we've been following has been Madeline Pryor the whole time and this is obviously a detriment to Cyclops because he was basically in love with the clone Madeline and not the actual Jean Grey he still loves both of them but he spent more time with Madeline and Madeline even had the baby Nathan which later turns out to be Cable and episode 4 I really had nothing, like, again, like, had nothing, I had, like, no hopes, because the villain in that, the villain for that episode is Mojo, and I just hate Mojo, I think his episodes, is, I, even, even in the original show, I think his episodes were so pointless, and uh, he just doesn't come off as, like, a threatening villain, Maybe in the comics he's more threatening than he is in the show, but in the original show and in this show, he just he just doesn't work for me. His whole shtick of like the reality TV or the video games, which he later moves on to, doesn't work for me. I just don't really like Mojo. I don't know why they brought him back for this for this season, but there's a Mojo episode for you. I do like the um, the second half of the episode with Life Death Part 1 with Storm meeting, uh, re reuniting back with Forge. But that's all I have to say with that for that episode. For episode 5, uh, it's going to be spoilers, but Gambit dies in this episode. We go see Genosa and uh, the mutants living in harmony. But... Out of nowhere, a sentinel comes and like attacks everyone, destroys 4,500 like mutants. I think it was something like that. And Gambit dies. He sacrifices himself 
which he go. I, w I wish we saw more of Gambin this season, but I think the way the show handled his death was really well done. Was was his ne was his death necessary? I don't think so. I think he could have lived like another season or two, but at least. But if you're gonna give him a death, make it memorable. Remember it, <laughs> you know. Which they did succeed in, so applause for that. Storm and Life Death Part Two. She figure out how like regain her powers while. Um, overtaking this evil entity owl that wants to, uh, I guess, take over her body. I'm not sure. But she gets her powers back in this episode. And uh, her costume. I, I don't remember from what um, comic run the costume. The black one cost the, the black costume is from. But I, in my opinion, I prefer the black costume more than the white costume. So... Her seeing her in the in the new show was really cool, and episode episode seven with the the bad eyes with Rogue, and uh, finding Bolivar Trask. It was all right. Uh, Rogue, I think I have a few not really issues, but. I have a few feelings about Rogue, how they wrote her in this season. Like, I don't think this was ever, like, even hinted at in the original series. Like, I know it was in the comics, but not the show. But, like, out of nowhere, she has a thing for Magneto. And I guess they had a relationship. And in this show, they kind of try to do, like, a love triangle thing before Gambit dies. And it doesn't really work for me. I don't, like... I, like the way it was handled, I feel like they should have been more explained, like why they like drifted apart, the why they separated. But I didn't really like how she was with Magneto, and then out of nowhere, she at the end she chose to be with um, Gambit, only for Gambit to die, of course. But but see, like I understand to a degree, but she acts like really reckless in the episode. <laughs> And doesn't even contact the X Men about where, um, about Gyric and the the information she wants from him. And the tolerance's existence. I think the last three episodes were the best episodes of the whole series because this is really the episodes where we got the. The stakes were really high, and uh, we just had no idea where the direction was going to go for them. And part one gives us the Spider-Man 90, 90, a, sp <laughs> a Spider-Man 90 cameo, so I like Spider-Man, so that was good for me. But in term, but by this point, they discovered that the um that the Sentinels they discovered. By this point, they discovered that the real villain behind everything is not, it's not sinister, it's not Gyric, Bolivar Trask, or the Sent or Master Mold, but it's a villain named ba Bastion, and Bastion is from a from a past where he got inf his dad got infected with a virus from the future, and. Uh, He's basically like a living sentinel, like a living, breathing sentinel of flesh. And he basically tells the X-Men that he wants to, he's weaponizing civilians for them to become sentinels whenever they spot a mutant. And uh, obviously that's really inhumane and basically the X-Men have to stop Bastion before before the Sentinels wipe them out because they are more inferior and powerful than a regular um, a regular robot Sentinel and uh, I really like the action in this show like there, there, there's like a Nightcrawler fight with Wolverine and 
I love Nightcrawler. I think Nightcrawler is one of my favorite characters. And there's a scene where Logan is stabbing one of the Sentinels and we see a glimpse of Nightcrawler's portals when he teleports. I thought that was really cool. Um, and then I think the episode ends with Magneto shutting the whole world down. So then the next episode, we move on to Tolerance's existence, part two. We see more of of uh, Cyclops and Jean Grey coming, coming to terms that their son is Cable. And I'm glad they're actually doing something with the Cable character right now. Aside aside from Deadpool 2, I feel like he's been like really underutilized in media. So I'm just happy to see him. I think he's a really badass character, and he was really cool in this show. He he was in the original series too, but I think he really shines in this show. And because he was even in, because he was even in in the the saga, the good bad, the beyond good and evil saga, which technically was technically was supposed to be the series the series finale of the original until they got greenlit for season five. But he's just really cool in this show, and then, and then, it was cool seeing all the Marvel cameos, and tolerance. Is, and we're gonna talk about the last episode now. Tolerance is existence. Part, ex, tolerance is extinction. Part three, which I wanted, which I wanted to add, that to, the tolerance is existent. What was what, what do you call it? The um the protocol that's. Bastion's protocol to to eliminate all mutants. But anyways, part three, we um oh I wanted to, I wanted to add too that part two ended with a really like cool um we see Wolverine stabbing Magneto, which I did not expect at all, especially with all the blood and go at the end with Magneto Magneto ripping Slogan skeleton out. And uh, I really think Logan's gonna be fine. If anything, I, I think he's gonna heal by the next season. He's he's gonna have bone claws, but I think his healing factor will be a lot stronger since the adamantium isn't affecting his uh, his body and poisoning him. But anyways, episode ten really really cl like put the ribbon in the gift. Episode three. Like they, they eventually defeat Bastion. Magneto gets his mind. He doesn't get his mind wiped, but he gets kind of like brainwashed, and by Charles Xavier, by turning the world back on after, um, after turning the world off, like the electricity. But he turns it back on, and then Bastion eventually has the X Men under their under his will but Jean Grey recovered I think this this was a little this was a little deus ex machina but uh but at the same time I'm gonna accept it because it was really cool but she gets the part of the phoenix back and with that power she uses it to defeat Bastion but she also takes the life away from Mr. Sinister who if you know, he's lived for centuries, and and he gets his demise the way he deserves it. He gets all old and like weak and wrinkly, and I think the ending was really interesting with with the X Men being split up again, and the um. Part of the X-Men ending up in the apocalypse time when apocalypse was still human I assume or like not fully mutated and then which I did not expect apocalypse to even like show up in this show but but then Scott and uh, Scott and Gene uh, like they end up in the future and they and they end up with the um I, I don't remember. He they, they end up in the future and there's like the there's young Nathan, young Cyclops. And uh, 
they're happy to see him. And when it comes to the um, to the they meet the they meet the Askinsons, and the, I mean that's pretty much it for the Gene and Cyclops storyline for next season. I think we're just gonna find a way. We're just gonna have to find a way back to like get the X Men back in the nineties and like back together. But I, I've never read the Arkansas storyline or the Adventures of Cyclops in Phoenix. But I think that's where we're going with this. As for the Apocalypse stuff, I don't even know where they're going to go from there. I do want to say that this episode has a lot of cameos again. Like Black Panther, T'Chaka, Iron Man, and Captain America. And then what, and what I'm really hoping for. And this, so Spider-Man Peter Parker... We see we see Peter Parker and we see Mary Jane. And what I'm really hoping for is that we get like Spider Man ninety eight or something. But seeing them was cool. I'm glad that Peter eventually found MJ from that from that um that cliffhanger that we never got the resolution of for the original nineties Spider Man. But yeah, I mean my theories is that Bishop and Forge they're gonna build their friendship from here. This is the start to their eventual friendship in the future. So how we would see in the original series. And anyways, I think the um, the whole show is really great. I mean, there's like some of the best Marvel stuff in a while. It, the, I I think it, I think that it can drag on. It, like the first three four episodes for me. Re, the the first like one like two like episode two to four really dragged on i think the first one was like all right but then after episode five it just started getting better and better which was good i think i think they were they were really cooking with that finale that three-parter finale with tolerance is extinction but other than that i think it was a really solid show and you should definitely check it out if you haven't a lot of people ask if they should watch the original show before this one. And in my opinion, I, I, I'd say why not? I mean, the original show is just as good. It concludes right before this show starts. And I think it, like, it's like groundwork for like, getting to know these characters. But anyways, that was just my rant on X-Men. It wasn't really a rant, just me talking for like, I don't know, 20 minutes or something. But anyways, that's enough guys. If you guys wanna um, if you guys wanna subscribe, support, go ahead, please. Anything will be appreciated. And I'll see you guys next time. Sorry for the long video. I just I just really wanted to talk about this. And I might even had I, I even I might even had more to talk about. I just don't remember. I'm not going off a script or anything. But other than that, thank you guys, see ya.